Amen. The sunless city of God. Revelation 21, verses 9 through verse 24. And the word of the Lord today reads, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, and 140 and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was, at, was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones, the first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh crystallite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. Just think about that. Every gate to God's holy white. Glory. Every gate is a single pearl. A single pearl. Oh my God. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, S-U-N, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. Listen. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved. Ooh. Oh my God. And the nations of them which are saved shall 
walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Hallelujah. Whoo, I can't wait to preach this message. This thing's burning in me like a volcano. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Master, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we love you. God, today we love you. We thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, God, today. Hallelujah. That even as we come into the house of God, there is a sacred, holy, white city that is made of transparent gold, whose gates are of a solid pearl, whose foundations today, oh God, are of a variety of precious stones. Stones. Oh God, even now that city is earthward bound. Even now that city, God, is descending from God out of heaven as a bride adorned for a husband. And we look forward to the day, oh God, when we might occupy that glorious holy white city. Master, today even the city that Abraham sought whose builder and maker is God. Master, today set the man of God ablaze. Set my soul on fire. Let the anointing today, God, use me up. Oh God, deliver the word you've placed in my spirit for this moment and this hour. Let the church of the Most High today be filled with the Holy Ghost as the truth of God goes forth. Oh, Master, bring it to life. Anoint every word that I speak. Let everything, God, that I utter this hour be from the throne of God. And let the anointing of the Holy Ghost bear witness and testify to that fact. Oh, Jesus, how we need to hear from you today, Lord. Grant it, Master, for we ask it in none other than Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes you tell people that you're going on vacation or you're going somewhere. And uh, they'll say, oh, really? And where are you going? So you'll tell them, you know, well, I'm going to the Caribbean or I'm going to take a cruise. Most of the time, most people want to go somewhere where they can get some sun. Amen. Most of the time, especially if it's winter time, especially if it's a cold time of the year, most of us want to get somewhere where we have the light and warmth of the sun that we can relax in and we can enjoy. And we'll tell them, oh, I'm headed for some sun. Hallelujah. I'm headed somewhere where there's lots and lots of sun and sand and in ocean and uh, I'm going to really enjoy myself well I'm here to tell you today I'm headed for somewhere where there will be no sun not only will there not be the need of an S-U-N or a moon to light it but there will be no need for the S-O-N oh my Lord Pastor I can't believe you would say that I can't believe you would imply that some way the Son of God will not be present in God's blessed holy white city. That city of gold that's promised in Revelation 21. Well, I'm here to tell you today, my friend, if you read the book of Revelation, if you understand the revelation of Jesus Christ as given to John the Apostle, whom the Word of God describes as the Apostle whom Jesus loved. If you read the revelation of Jesus Christ, you will not one time read where the Son of God is present.
You will not read where the Father sits here and the Son sits to his right hand. No. It's not described at all. Nowhere is it described that the Father and the Son. No, as a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, the term Son of God is only employed one time. And it is employed in Revelation 2, verse 18. The Word of God said, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. So in Revelation 2, we understand that it is Jesus, it is the Son of God who is speaking to John, who has brought John to this place in the Spirit so that he might reveal to him uh, great things that should transpire in the last days. But that's all we read in the entire book of Revelation. That is all we read of the Son of God. Twice in the book of Revelation, Jesus is referred to as being like unto the Son of Man. The point of this phrase being used being that He bears a physical image that resembles a man, in particular the man Jesus Christ. But we do not see in the book of Revelation ever, outside of that one verse I read to you a moment ago, we do not see one single time where the Son of God is referenced as the Son of God. Oh, my Lord. You say, well, the pastor, that, I, I don't quite understand that. I don't understand how that could be possible. Listen, in Revelation 1.13, the Word of God said, And in the midst of the seven golden, golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paths with a golden girdle. In Revelation 14.14, 14, it said, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. You remember that some weeks ago I preached the message, Identity is uh, changes according to location. Do you remember that? And I talked about how, depending on where the Lord is, His manifestation is different. His identity, He is known differently in different places. On earth, God, walking among us as a human being, was known as the Son of God. But He was the Son of God after the flesh. That's what the Word of God says. In heaven, they don't need the Son of God. Oh, my Lord. In heaven, they're familiar with God Himself. Hallelujah. They know who God is. They don't need a physical manifestation of God. The Bible said that uh, uh, for without controversy, great is the mystery of Godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, seen of angels. So when Jesus came as God manifest in the flesh, that was the first time ever angels had beheld God manifested in a human form, as a human being. That was the first time. He was the Son of God after the flesh. We read these three references. One, the Lord said, listen, the one who's talking to you right now is the Son of God. Now, why is he doing that? Because he's got to establish who it is that's, that's speaking. He's got to establish who it is that's doing the talking at that moment. Then 
John writes twice more, but he doesn't reference the Son of God. He references the Son of Man, which we know is also a title for the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I telling the truth? We know that he ran about calling himself the Son of Man. We talked about going back to the Old Testament prophecy in Daniel and why the Lord referenced himself as the Son of Man. Remember? Okay, so now it's established that the key figure in all that we're seeing, all that we're hearing in the book of Revelation, is Jesus. That's being established so we know, okay, so Jesus is the one. All of this is transpiring at His word and at His command. But all of a sudden, in the book of Revelation, no longer is Jesus referred to as the Son of God, nor is He referred to as having an appearance as the Son of Man. But all of a sudden He appears. Woo! Glory! Oh, I'm telling you. He appears on the scene, and now He is manifested differently. He's not manifested as the Son of Man. He's not manifested as the Son of God. How is He manifested? He is manifested as the Lamb. Hallelujah. He is manifested as the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. There are 26 references throughout the book of Revelation in which the Lamb, capital L, is referenced. There are 26 times in the book of Revelation where the Lord is referred to as the Lamb of God. He doesn't need to be seen as the Son of God. No, he didn't need to be identified as the Son of God. That was necessary only after the flesh. That was necessary only on the earthly plane. But in the book of Revelation, all of us, oh hallelujah, all of a sudden Jesus takes on a whole new persona. <laughs> he takes on a whole new act. He takes on a whole new character. And he appears as a lamb. The entire revelation of Jesus Christ written by the Apostle John points us to and emphasizes the Lamb of God. Listen to me, children. The Son was the vehicle whereby the Lamb was made available for sacrifice. I want you to hear me now. Listen. The Son was the vehicle whereby the Lamb was made available for sacrifice. In order for the Lord to die on behalf of fallen mankind, He had to manifest Himself in human form. So the Son was a vehicle so that the Lamb could die. But like Abraham, listen, if this don't excite your soul, you need to pray through. But like Abraham, the son went to the altar to be sacrificed. But just before the fatal blow of Abraham's sacrificial blade, <laughs> God himself provided a lamb. Oh, hallelujah. And Abraham offered the lamb in the stead of his son. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. This is a type. This is a type. Woo! This is a type of Jesus going to the cross to be the sacrifice. He went the Son, but He died the Lamb. Hallelujah! He went the human, but He died the divine. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. Mm -hmm. Woo! 
You see, he had a dual identity. Isaac did not have a dual identity. Isaac had a singular identity. He was a boy. He was the son. Not only was he the son, he was the only legitimate son. Oh, but wait a minute. Abraham had a son before Isaac. Yeah. Ishmael, huh? That's a type of that's a type of Israel in the church. You want me to go further? You want me to go into Jacob had two wives? Rachel and Leah? Yeah, a type of God in the church. He has two wives, Israel and the church. He wanted the church, but he first had to go through Israel. He wanted the church, but he first had to marry the first wife to get to the second wife. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? But who's the one that gave him more children? Who's the one that bore him more sons? The second one, the one he wanted. Oh, I could go on and on and on. I'm going to tell you, God doesn't do anything by accident, my friend. There is a reason why throughout the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ is no longer referred to as the Son of Neither the Son of Man nor the Son of God. He is referred to over and over and over and over again as the Lamb. He will forever, forever be recognized and known as the Lamb. He will, as the Lamb, provide light for all of eternity. Hallelujah. He will provide light for all of eternity. And the Bible said that the glory of God is the light of the city. Well, put two and two together. Two plus two equals four. If the glory of God provides light for the city and the Lamb is the light thereof, then what is the glory of God? Jesus the Lamb, hallelujah, is the glory of God. Oh, one day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. What? To the glory of God the Father, hallelujah. Woo! My God, have mercy. It's the glory of the Lamb that will light the city of God that we today are journeying toward. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 13, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. Mm -hmm. See, God promised Abraham a son through Sarah, mm -hmm. not through anybody else. Therefore, the only legitimate son Abraham had in God's eyes was Isaac. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Uh -huh. Whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went up uh, unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, do I need to go into any parallels here? Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar so off, and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Listen, Abraham said, we're going to go worship and come back. Abraham didn't indicate for one second that he planned on Isaac not coming back with him. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to talk about knowing God. Hallelujah. 
he goes on, to, the word of God goes on to say, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they both, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father! And he said, meaning Abraham said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, Listen. Listen carefully to how Abraham worded this. My son... God will provide himself a lamb. Now all Abraham had to say was, God will provide a lamb. But that's not what he said. Nor did he say, God himself will provide a lamb. He said, God will provide himself a lamb. Do you follow? Do you get it? Abraham's telling Isaac, before, oh hallelujah, before God's going to let me kill you, he will come down from heaven and assume the place of a lamb and put himself on that altar before he'll let me sacrifice you. Because God keeps his word. He never breaks his promises. He said through Isaac, all the nations of the world will be blessed. He said through Isaac, you will have children like the sands of the sea. That would not be possible if Isaac were to die on an altar of sacrifice. Right. And Abraham knew it. He said, before God will break his word, <laughs> he'll come down out of heaven and he'll appear as a lamb. And I will sacrifice that lamb. Oh, hallelujah to God. <clears throat> so they went, both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the land, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Look, notice the language. Thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorn, horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh, God my provider. Hallelujah. God provides. When we understand who the Son is, we understand that His most significant purpose in coming was to become the Lamb. In John chapter 1, verses 26 through 36, I know these are long portions today. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God! Hallelujah! Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. 
this is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, good heavens, people, how hard is this? who is preferred before me because he was before me. John was born six months before Jesus was. How was Jesus before him? Well, it's easy. Because Jesus said, because before Abraham was, I am. That's right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. A man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it, ab and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Unto whom thou shalt see, the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Read all four of the Gospels. Read the three accounts in the four Gospels of John baptizing Jesus, and you will find that in those three accounts, every single one of them says, John bear record that he saw. Everyone who was there uh, watching Jesus be baptized that day did not see the dove descending and hear a voice. John did. God was doing that for John's benefit. God was doing that so that he would know this is the Messiah. Do you follow what I'm telling you now? Every one of them says, and John bear record that he saw. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of wrong teaching and preaching in the church and it's not hard to figure out if you just read the Bible and let it say what it says right, amen. instead of trying to read into it and I bear record excuse me John and I saw it and bear record that this is the Son of God so the Son of God and the Lamb of God are one and the same. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Wow. The Son was the vehicle for the Lamb. The Son was the vehicle, the physical manifestation of God that is called the Son of God was the vehicle by which God was able to place a lamb on the cross. In John chapter 11 verses 45 through 52, Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen, seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What shall we do? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Listen, the high priest is saying these words, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for that nation only, verse 52, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. The vehicle for the Lamb was the Son 
the Son got him to the place of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But on the cross, it was the Lamb that died. Hallelujah. God. John chapter 18, verses 33 through 38. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered in verse 34, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Meaning, but as of right now, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, children, I want you to understand something today. Before a lamb was crucified, excuse me, before a lamb was offered in sacrifice, it had to be examined carefully. They had to look and be certain that there were no broken bones, that there were no spots nor blemishes or defects of any kind. The chief priest and the priests, the rabbis, delivered Jesus to Pilate to be examined. And Pilate came out and declared, I find no fault in him yes, at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I find no fault in in him at all. What was Pilate saying without realizing what he was saying? What Pilate was saying was, this lamb is worthy of sacrifice. Hallelujah. This lamb is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be sacrificed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The son was merely the vehicle whereby the Lamb was able to go to the cross. Revelation 5, the entire chapter, it's 14 verses. I've got to read it to you real quick. And I saw in the right hand of Him that sat on the throne a book written, within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming, with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, oh hallelujah, and no man, and no man, and no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst 
of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Oh, hallelujah. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. I won't go into great detail, but these are seven spirits of God. This refers to seven aspects of God that are so perfect and complete in and of themselves that they stand alone. The spirit of holiness, for instance. The spirit of righteousness. The spirit of love. That's why they say God is love. Not that God loves. God is love. Well, God is the spirit. But there are seven aspects of God that are so perfect in, in that aspect that they literally stand alone. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as they had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood, by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Tommy, that is well over the Jehovah's Witness 120,000. Way over saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, even the demons and such as are in the sea, that means the whales, the dolphins, the octopus, Oh, hallelujah to God. And all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. I've told you in Greek, the word that is translated in the King James, in many translations from the Greek, Kai, and, A-N-D. It also can be translated even. Oftentimes it is translated even. But it is translated basically at the transgression of the translator. So those who have a view of God that separates him into persons, they tended to always go with the and. Making it appear as though this and that. Rather than this and even that because otherwise it would be saying and uh, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne even unto the lamb forever and ever and the four be sent amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever Oh my God, have mercy. I'm here to tell you today, the city of God will be sunless. You That's won't right. see anyone called the Son of God in heaven, my friend. You will not see Him sitting near, beside, behind, 
to the left, to the right, otherwise of the throne of God because the book of Revelation tells us that in heaven all we see is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. In Acts 20 verse 28 the word of God declares take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, listen, which he hath purchased with his own blood. To feed the church of God, which he who God hath purchased with his own blood. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do you understand now why would we sing, Oh, that city where the Lamb is the light. Hallelujah. Oh, we're celebrating. Don't you know that God has played many roles throughout eternity? God has played a number of roles. He's been, according to the word of God, Christ Jesus was the rock that followed Moses and the people of Israel in the wilderness. Hallelujah. The word of God said Christ Jesus was the rock. He was the rock. He's played a lot of roles, honey. Yes. Just because the lamb comes and takes the book from the hand of him that sits upon the throne, that doesn't mean that the lamb isn't the one who was sitting on the throne. That was just his role as redeemer. Jesus, the very name Jesus, meaning Jehovah, is become our salvation. Oh, hallelujah. Still not sure? Got one more passage to read, then I'm done for the day. Revelation 22, verses 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. There's one throne, and yet it's referred to as the throne of God and of the Lamb, even of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And His servants shall serve Him. Hallelujah. The throne of God and the Lamb and His. <laughs> Singular. Mm -hmm. And His servants shall serve Him. Singular, singular. Not their servants shall serve them. That's right. Oh, glory to God. Honey, it ain't but one throne. And the Word of God tells us in the book of Revelation that there's not but one that's set upon the throne. And He is both God and the Lamb. As Abraham said, God has presented Himself a sacrifice. Hallelujah. God has caused Himself to be offered in sacrifice. Listen. And they shall see His face and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Who is they? See, that's talking about the Holy Trinity. Oh, no, no, no. Honey, you need to learn to read. Who's the subject of that? There shall be no light there, and they, uh, and, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. He's talking about His people. Right. And they shall reign forever and ever. Who's going to reign? We are. Hallelujah. Don't you remember? 
that we just read in Revelation chapter 5, how that the people of God were going to reign forever and ever hallelujah yes. go back and read it again hallelujah go back and read it again we're going to reign forever and ever all oh, children today when you hear a song that talks about we'll need no light in that city that john saw coming down for jesus will be there his glory will abound, will need no light in that city of never-ending day. For the Lamb of God will take the night away, will need no light in that city. John saw coming down, for Jesus will be there. His glory will abound, will need no light in that city of never ending day for the Lamb of God will take the night away remember this message we are headed for the sunless city of God Amen. Hallelujah. God is going to literally revel throughout eternity in the greatest role that he ever played. So much so that the glory of that role as the Lamb will be the light of the city. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful today? The sunless city of God. Amen. If you stand with me this afternoon. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. I hope you got something today from this message. I know it, it, it excited me. I couldn't wait when the Lord gave it to me. I've got to tell you, and I'm not kidding, I never, I never even thought of some of uh, the things that I shared today. I, those some of these things have never even crossed my mind before. But the Spirit of the Lord brought this to my attention this week, and it just set my soul on fire, and I've been dying to share it with you today. I want to I want to try to sing this. Y'all help me today. Amen. There's a country far beyond the starry sky. There's a city where there never comes a night. If we're faithful, we shall go there by and by. Tis the city where the land is the light. In that city where the land is the light. Over there, and when free from toil and care, I am going where the land is the light. Here we have our days of sunshine, but we know that the sun which shines upon us now so bright will be changed to clouds and rain until we go to the city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where there cometh no night. I've a mansion over there, and when free from toil and care, I am going where the land is the light. There the flowers bloom forever, and the day shall be one eternal day without a night. And our tears shall be forever wiped away. In that city where the land is the light. 
In that city where the land is the light. In that city where their God met no night. I, the man, shut over there and went free from toil and care. I am going where the land is the light. Here we have our disappointments all the while, and our fondest hopes but meet with bitter blight. Though by night we weep, the morning brings a smile. In that city where the land is the light, in that city where the land is the light in that city where there comes yet no night I the man shut over there and went free from toil and care I am going where the land is the light then let sunshine fade let twilight bring its blue not a shadow can my blissful soul affright, for I know that up in heaven there is room. In that city where the Lamb is the light, in that city where the Lamb is the light, where there come met no night. I the mansion over there and went free from toil and care. I am going where the land is the light. In that city where the land is the light. In that city where there come a man shut over there and went free from toil and care. I am going where the land is the light. In that city where the land is the light. Oh, in that city where there come men no night. I'm a man shut over there Went free from toil and care. I am going where the land is the light.